everybody, welcome to Drive Through Review 189. Uh, today we're going to talk about Dream Factory. Uh, this is a game from Dr. Reiner Knizia. It's an auction game, pretty much a pure auction game. Uh, it's set in Hollywood, so you're going to be bidding on directors and actors and special effects and different things like that. Basically, you're a movie producer or you're a movie studio, and you've got different scripts that you're trying to fill up with people and various things and you're in a sort of a bidding war with the other producers uh, for that stuff. So let me show you how the game works. It's pretty simple and then I'll come back and tell you what I think of it now. Okay, I got the game here set up for three players. Uh, basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to fill your scripts here. So you can see here I've got Studio One and then there's going to be three scripts and there's three different types of scripts. You got comedies which are orange, action and drama here which are blue and so each studio here is going to get a set of scripts and then you're also going to have some uh, you know, neutral ones. These are in a stack uh, face up. So uh, as somebody completes a script, then they can draw a new one, just whatever the top one is off the stack and add that to, uh, you know, in front of them. And then they'll try to complete those as well. Players will get a little screen here and then you can see, you know, which studio they are. And the screen is going to be used to hide their money. And the money in this game is actually really cool. It's kind of this weird shaped a uh, little note here of a million dollars and depending on the number of players you'll start with you know a certain amount of money and then go from there now if you play with two players uh, money is actually open information uh, so uh, you don't actually use the screens so you're going to give somebody the first player marker here and then we're going to basically walk down this sort of film strip here and then you can see go down here and then auction off each of these spaces individually. Whoever wins the auction for a space will take this and then it will get first bid on the next space. So let's zoom in and take a look at this first space here. I've got nothing in here. All these other spaces here have been filled and each round after you go through here you're gonna fill in basically the number of these things. So this will say three, so I'll draw three things uh, out of this bag here and put those here. This one there's two and then there's these party spaces which I'll talk about in a minute. So you're gonna fill all those up there and then to start the round you draw one of these sort of super duper directors off of this stack here and there's four of these. So we're basically gonna be playing four rounds. And you can see this guy here is uh, Peter Bacon. He looks familiar to some people I would expect. Now all of these directors here all have four stars you can see. So we've got some other things like uh, uh, Woodland Alien, uh, Martin Scorch, Ches Cheesy, uh, what else is here? We got Steven Spellborg. And so you can see that there's basically sort of tongue in cheek uh, Hollywood caricatures here. So, first thing you're gonna do is flip a tile off of here, and then you're gonna bid on this director. So, when you bid, let's say uh, you're basically just gonna keep going around and around. If you pass, you're basically out for you know this bidding round here. Let's say I had one with a bid of $6. And so we're playing a three-player game. So I'm going to take all the money that I bid, split it up among the other players, and then give them the money. So if I bid six, I would give each player six dollars. Now if I bid, let's say, seven, I'd give them each three, and then that one dollar remaining, we're just not going to round it up or anything. We're going to put it in the middle, and then later on when we need to sort of you know, make a even distribution, you can take the, any ones that are in here in the middle and give those to the players. So for the most part, you want stuff with a lot of stars on them here. So you can see this director's got four stars. Uh, this actress here, who's actually considered a star actress, uh, is has three stars. But you can see we've got sort of the um, you know the camera work here. There's no stars on there. Uh, the music work here. There's no stars. So you don't really want those usually. But again, what you're trying to do is fill up this uh, film strip here. So you can see we've got a director's chair, so only directors can go here, and those are people with a green background. Now over here on this other spot, there's sort of a, a utility director or something, maybe a union guy. Uh, you know, he's only two stars there, but I can put him in this director's chair, and then I can put an actor here. Now actors and stars are a little bit different, so stars here have a red background, that's considered a star, and those are sort of optional, and they're used sort of, you know, to bump up the value of the script. And then you've got just regular actors here, like, uh, what is this guy's name? Jim Carkey here. Uh, so he's just sort of a regular actor. Now the regular actors will go in this spot here. And then you've also got uh, special effects. So if we look at this spot here, uh, then you want to take one of these special effects tokens here, maybe some little stunt workers there or something, and you put that on there. And then we've also got music. Again, you can fill that in with the matching uh, icon there. Now you can also get a contract here. 
And so contracts can substitute any of these spots except for the director spot. And then you can use these here. Now, one thing you can do is you can actually upgrade stuff. So if I had bid on a one round and I had gotten this actress here who you know, has no stars, and then later on I had Jim Carkey here, then I can actually you know put him on there and upgrade her and get rid of her. So that's okay to upgrade. Now you're gonna keep doing that until you fill up the strip and then you're gonna score it. Now if you look here at the bottom, there's a star spot. And this is where these sort of superstars go. Now again, they are optional to filling up this script here. So once everything is filled, except for the star spot, which is optional, then I'm gonna look and count all of the stars on all of the pieces that are here, including the two stars you know, that come with the script for Backpack from the Future. <laughs> And then I'm gonna take a look here. And then I'm gonna look at these little uh, film reels here. So if we look around the board, you can see these kind of go up in value here. I've got starting at zero all the way up to 22 here. So I'm gonna count the number of stars on my script, including everything that's on there, and then take the matching reel here. And that's basically the points for that. So let's say that uh, strip scored me 15 points. I'll take that, I'll put it on the script here, and then we basically scored that. So the first person to score a particular type, so we've got a comedy here, is going to get one of these little trophies here. So these set of three trophies here, there's one for each type. You've got the orange for comedy, you know, and the green one here. So this is gonna reward you five points at the end of the game for being the first one to make uh, such a script. And then at the end of each round, once we bid on all of these spots here, then whoever has the highest script, you know, has the script with the highest number of points, is gonna take one of these in each of the first three rounds. So we've got three of these sort of best of the year kind of things uh, that they're gonna get an extra five points for. And it's feasible if in the first round you have a script that scored a ton of points, let's say 19 or 20, that you could get all f three of these if nobody ever had a better script than you throughout all the different years. The same script could score multiple times. Now let's look at this party space here. So the party spaces are a little bit different. You can see the tiles here are actually face down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bid until we get to this spot here, and then we're gonna flip over these. Now, the number of tiles in here is dictated by the number of players. So three player game, we flip over three of these, and then we're gonna take a look at them like so. So what's gonna happen is the players with the most actors, whether that be stars or just regular actors, on all of their scripts is gonna to get to choose first. So everybody's gonna to get to choose one of these. And then the next, the person with the second most actors and so on is gonna to get to choose. Now ties are gonna be broken by who's closer clockwise to uh, the start player here. But everybody gets to choose one, you just take it and then put it on your script. Now you can take something and just discard it. If you really wanted to take something just to kind of screw somebody out of it, you could do that even if you don't need it. And if you take a look here, we've got a little treat here. We've got uh, Dr. Reiner Canizzi there himself. He's actually worth a negative star. Now why would you have such a thing? Well, let's take a look at that. So after we've done four bidding rounds, we're gonna compare all of the completed scripts that people have completed, and we're gonna hand out some awards. Now we've got three big awards here for 10 points each, and these are in the different categories. So you're gonna take whoever had you know, the best action script, they're gonna get 10 points, whoever had the highest total of the comedy and the drama, and they're gonna get a bonus 10 points at the end of the game, and they get these you know, nifty little trophies here. And then you're gonna take who had the best overall script, disregarding the category, and they're gonna get 10 points. And then you're gonna award the Raspberry. And this is whoever had the lowest scoring script here. So there's a very interesting part to scoring the script. So when you complete a script, you're gonna take, like I said, the matching reel uh, from the board here. So you can see some of these actually there are two. So we've got a 14 plus and a 14. So if I score the 14, before you and somebody else comes along and scores a 14, they're gonna get this other one. So this 14 is actually considered higher in terms of you know, comparing the better script total uh, than you know, this 14. But let's say we're down here, we're both trying to score the lowest script here to get those 10 points. I build a script with three, I get the three, and then you come along and let's say you also score a script with the three. Well, if there's nothing left of that, you're gonna take the next lowest one there. So I scored a script with only three stars, which is very possible, and then so I'm actually gonna get the two. So at the end of the game, I, even though we both had the same number of stars, because I have to take the last, uh, you know, the next least one, if there's nothing there, I actually score a little bit lower, and then eventually I will get the you know worst script of all time. So in a sense, is there's a rush to get the higher numbers if you want to get the you know the higher scoring scripts, you want to get there first because you're gonna take this first.
first and the next player has that. But as far in terms of getting the lowest script, you kind of want to wait until the end and then maybe even you can end up grabbing the zero if all of these uh, tokens are gone there. So that's pretty much the game. You're going to total up all the points that you have from the reels that you've collected, all the trophies that you've collected, and then any money left over, you're going to have uh, you know one point per million dollars that you have left over. And that's the game. Okay, hope you enjoyed the overview. Uh, this is a game that I frankly did not like at all uh, for the longest time. Now, I played this probably three years ago or so, uh, and I think I made the mistake of actually playing this with five people. I played it twice and frankly did not like the game at all. Um, when you play with that many players, there are tendencies based on how the tiles kind of come out and you know sort of the bidding that happens for people just to kind of feel not very involved in the game you know like some tiles that come up well, I don't really need those right now and you know I've already got these and the other people didn't bid a whole lot so they kind of got it for cheap so I didn't get any money and so what but when I bid I got into a huge bidding war so I paid out a bunch of money so the money gets really wonky that way and you just kind of you can get in situations where that's sort of like a runaway leader kind of thing uh, with that many players but so I wrote sort of a mini negative review sort of on my memory of the those plays uh, not too long ago a few months ago in this thing called the blacklist I just kind of write um, you know my negative experiences with games in there and this was the one game that 100% of people that commented disagreed on I listed a bunch of other games obviously and I had people that actually agreed you know, probably 50-50 for the most part on all the other games, but this one was 100%. 100% of people said, no, you're wrong, this is actually a good game. So I was like, huh, that's weird, you know. Usually there's going to be somebody that's going to agree, oh, I had a similar experience or whatever. So I said, okay, well, I had a math trade that I was in a couple months ago, and so I put this on there to something I was going to get, and luckily I got it. And this is the very nice version. This component uh, version here from Philosophia is excellent, 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 excellent. You know, I've never, you know, begrudged the components of this particular version, uh, which is the one I also played a couple years ago. It's outstanding. I love it. I, I love the movie strips. I love the little character names on the actors. Uh, you know, just the whole overall design of the board and everything is great. Uh, so, but recently I've been playing it, and we've been playing it three player, just three player, and I love it with three players because. Uh, there's just enough in the game that you can sort of step in and bow out and try to, you know, uh, sort of not really push your luck, but kind of decide which of those piles of tokens to go after. And you can make sort of real tactical decisions to sort of deny people, um, you know, tokens that they're going to need. And, and there's really critical sort of meaningful things that can happen with your bidding. And I really do like how the money kind of changes hands. Um, you know, with that lesser amount of players. So my particular recommendation would be play this with probably three or maybe four. I don't know. I think three is probably the uh, perfect amount. And then two, I haven't tried it with two, but you know, it's an auction game and it's open information, so it's just sort of. I'm sure it's fine, but you know, it's just I I don't really have a desire to play it with two, honestly. Um, I've played a couple of two-player auction games, and they're usually the least fun, you know, number of players to play with is with two. So I just don't really care to. Uh, I got other things to play, right? Uh, so yeah, so I'm eating massive crow on this one because I think uh, probably I short shrifted it and you know, that's gonna happen, right? I mean, um, maybe I was in a bad mood that day, I don't remember. Um, but yeah, this is excellent, I would recommend it. I think it's still relatively available, you should be able to pick this up. I don't know that it's in a, you know, kind of a current print run, but I think most of the shops online and different places have it. And that would just be my advice, I wouldn't really play it with five just because you're going to have like two people that, you know, will get sort of bounced out of it and just sort of feel like they're not participating. So that's no good, right? That's like the worst thing ever that you can have in a game is to ever make it so you feel like, oh, it, if I disappeared from this chair, then it wouldn't make any difference to anybody. <laughs> I mean, that's like the worst thing that a game can ever have. And you, you're going to have that sometimes, even in good games, you know, there'll be moments where that exists. Um, but... Uh, but, you know, that's one of the things that I just, that makes me set a game on fire. Um, anyway, so it's a cool game. I really like it. And as far as where it sits in the Nizia auction games, you know, just to give you some perspective here. Uh, modern art, hate that. I did like it when I first played it. And I've played that several, several times. I hate it now. Don't get that game. Uh, Raw is good. I really enjoy Raw. And I'm frankly burnt out on it, but I probably played that. Uh, I feel like I'm exaggerating, but I don't think I am 50 times. <laughs> and then Medici, I've probably played that probably a good 30 times. I really like that. I think that I like that a little bit better than Raw. 
This one is kind of competing with Medici for me. Now, again, he's got to have a specific player count. Medici I actually like with more players and with less players. I think it, it plays equally well with um, you know whatever player count you're in, and that's kind of where it beats out Raw. Raw, again, with a lot of players, again, you can kind of feel like it's left out. It's not as bad as this one with more players. Uh, but I think this one kind of moves it up in there. And he's got some other auction games that are, um, well, relative garbage, you know, um, compared to the supreme excellence of these games, and especially Medici and Raw, and I think this with three players. So, that is Dream Factory. Uh, thanks.